Hey guys, thought I'd pop in and, and uh, do a little story time for you and uh, tell you where I've been and, and the things we've gone through um, up through this whole uh, COVID-19 thing and, and uh, of course I haven't been putting up any videos um, because of what happened uh, so I just want to tell you my story get it out there and let you guys get to get to know me a little bit better um, so back in March uh, like on the 8th I believe um, I went to my sister's house we went to my sister's house to do an investigation and uh, while we were there while I was doing my intro uh, my son had called um, and uh, actually, his his their house was on fire. Um, the fire department and all was there. Um, he was lucky that he caught it when he did because the wall was bubbling and the cats happened to be just uh, looking at the bubbles and he it caught his attention. Uh, it's an old furnace. And, uh, anyway, so we went on. You know, we did our, you know, pretty quick investigation. You know, we're making sure that everything was, you know, okay there. And and um, of course, if you've seen the video, it's out at at my sister's house. There was, you know, some bad. Uh, or, yeah, bad juju going on around uh, down there, and, and anyway, we we uh, we got done there. And as soon as we got done there, we went to my, my son's house, and um, it had actually caught fire twice. Yes, he had to call him back because it had caught fire again, and it's a good thing that they went there to check it that second time because. You know, he caught it in too, so. The house was unlivable at that moment, so they were grabbing some things and the kitties to bring it here to stay with us. And um, when they went back to get some more things, that's when they noticed the fire again, so. It was a very crazy day. <clears throat> yeah, so. Um. So then fast forward to a couple days later, after all the chaos of, you know, trying to move them in, make space for them. A couple days later, he talked with um, a lady about an investigation. It was actually, it's a tavern, and uh, we, we had actually talked to her before about mm -hmm. um, coming and doing an investigation, and she was, you know, she was open to it. Um, and uh, we, that day we had actually taken my daughter to a doctor's appointment. And uh, I had shot her a message, you know, while I was sitting there waiting. And because um, we were trying to set up a date to go talk with her and stuff and see the place and all that. And uh, she was like, well, how about Friday the 13th? She said, you know, I had somebody cut out and they don't want to do it anymore, um, would you be available? And it was, what, like? It was two days. Two days. So we couldn't pass up an opportunity. Friday the 13th. Um, paranormal investigation. Paranormal investigation at a known uh, haunted place. Um, and we got the place all to ourselves all night. We got it all to ourselves all night long. Um, so the night before we we went down we talked to her we talked with her um she showed us around um we had the k2 meter and that was going off in the basement and um just it was a, a good feeling um so we got ourselves all ready and uh you know we got all our equipment charged and, and we were ready to go um 
We got down there. We were. She wanted to do like a kind of a meet and greet. You know, the customers. You know, they they're really into it, and uh, they really embrace the paranormal yeah, side of it, which they, is really great. Yeah, they love to hear stories about what's going on down there, and and uh, they they have their own experiences sometimes, and uh, so we were kind of eating and doing a meet and greet and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, actually, the night that we got down there, Friday the 13th, uh, the evening we got down there, um, the owner had actually got sick. She, she didn't, we don't want to, she didn't want to talk to us and get us sick because, you know, that would just, she just didn't want that to happen, but... So we talked to our daughter and and, uh, and she led us through everything, showed us, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and we had some some pretty big stuff happen that night. We were we invited a couple friends uh, that help us. They've helped us before on investigations, mm -hmm. um, and it was a, a a real exciting night. Um, mm -hmm. We had, I had a chair move in the basement on me. I was doing, a, you know, a, a lung kind of challenge. And, and, uh, lights out challenge. Lights out challenge and I was using my infrared. And uh, um, what else happened? I, oh gosh, it, uh, lots of noises and we were seeing things and hearing things and um, Yes. And the uh, feelings were just crazy. The, the footsteps. Yes. Um, yeah, the feelings were... Whew. Yeah. I actually uh, actually got touched. Uh, we went to sleep for a few hours and I actually got touched. Um, so all that's going to be in a series uh, of upcoming videos. And we're trying to line that up now. Um, and we'll be going back. And... Uh, and doing more investigations. Um, so fast forward a little bit. Well, well, during that night, I started to feel bad. I I woke up. Well, we didn't really sleep, but maybe a few hours. We went to bed like at what six a.m. Mm -hmm. We slept till maybe about nine, and I was just had the chills, and I just could not shake it, and I thought. Maybe it was something there causing it. I didn't know. I wasn't feeling the greatest. Thought it was allergies. Um, we woke up the next morning. We were talking with the owners before we left. Um, the chef and and the owner's daughter. And I just started feeling really, really lightheaded. And I had to sit down because I thought I was going to pass out. So um, I thought, okay, well, maybe we're just tired. Maybe because, you know, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I'm, I need rest. So we figured we'd come home and we'd take a nap and gather our thoughts and go through all our footage that evening. But <laughs> yeah, uh, things now, changed. <laughs> keep in mind that, um, which I'll give you a little hint in the video. Um <clears throat> It was four of us there, and there was actually two bedrooms, and we all slept in the same same room. Mm -hmm. So, so that that'll tell you how it, it spooked us. Yeah, it, um, the other room was really, 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 yeah. really creepy, and I did catch a photo that really shook us. So, yes. we will be showing that in those videos for sure. Yes. So please. Hang tight with us. They're coming. Yeah, they're coming. Um, so the next morning we, you know, we got a lot of all stuff and, and uh, we shot up to McDonald's and we ate a little bit and we came home, um, brought all stuff in and, and went to bed and I was feeling fine before all that and then I was wiped out. Yeah. Just wiped out. I couldn't, I didn't even feel like I could hold my head up. And I was, you know, I was tired. <laughs> and 
Because it had been a long night. I mean, a long couple of nights, really. The adrenaline rush was, yes. we didn't even realize what time it was, and we were just go, go, go. And, it, and more, more, more. Yeah, more, but more. when we stopped, we stopped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, when I woke up, um, I was, well, we both were, like, freezing to death. And, I mean, I was under the covers blowing hot air on myself and, and <laughs> that kind of, you know, like I knew I had something and I couldn't get up and she finally had to get up to go to the bathroom um, and I told her to turn the hot water on uh, that I was going to jump in the shower. Um, so she turned it on and... and I just grabbed a, a stack of clothes off of my, my dresser. Just I didn't even know what was in it. All I knew was that I wanted to get warm and I wanted to put a lot of clothes on. <laughs> and uh, so I get in the shower and I, I I didn't get totally, I mean, I was shivering the whole time I was in there. It, it, it didn't, didn't do much for me. And I got out and I, whatever clothes was there, I, I, I put on, I think it was jogging pants, it was a shirt, I think I had a jacket on. Um, I don't think he had any socks, I don't think he had any underwear on. No socks, no underwear. <laughs> and I started to feel sick. Um, so I kept going back in there and I kept heaving and dry heaving and everything. Um, nothing would come out. Uh, uh, a pain shot up um, through my chest and I thought it was just like heartburn because, uh, you know, I had ate and just laid down and, you know, I figured maybe that's what it was, but nothing would even think about coming up and the more I coughed and everything the, the worse it got and uh, you know I've had that I've had that pain before and I knew right away pretty much what it was um, so I was hoping it would go away uh, and uh, it didn't uh, now at that time, I was a smoker, um, so I just needed a cigarette and I needed to think, you know, and all smokers know that feeling, and I went out to my truck, which was, you know, my, probably 20 feet away from, from where we were at, and I got to my truck and I found my cigarettes, and I couldn't find a lighter and, and I realized that it was in my garage which is probably about 10 feet away um, and I had my phone with me and I was dragging my like my feet were so heavy and the pain was getting worse and worse and worse and I tried to make it to the I tried to make it to the garage but uh, I was like, you know, if I don't say something, then it's going to be too late. And, uh, and so I, I couldn't even get back in here to call her. I had to, I mean, couldn't even get back in here to tell her that we needed to call 911. And, um, so I called her. And... Uh, Oh, it seemed like it took them forever to get here. Um, I couldn't move. I just... I couldn't really move. And I just couldn't wait for them to get here. I... Okay, so 
by now you probably know some of you may some of you may, may not but this is where it was hidden um i had a heart attack about five years ago it wasn't a, it was a mid to mild heart attack um it was a blockage a hundred percent um no stents put in and no bypass is done because they told me it was bypassing itself and that it the risk of bypass well no i'm sorry the risk of putting a stent in would cause more damage than the actual blockage so they couldn't so they did not do anything your first heart attack now i'm not scared to say my age back then i was 43 years old i'm 48 49 this month um, but I I really I really really started seeing in my life flash before my eyes and I just I thought this time was it because it 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 just wouldn't stop It's kind of one of those things you, you don't know whether to say goodbye or. <laughs> anyway, Ambulance finally got here. Picked me up, and <laughs> put me in the back of the ambulance and evaluated everything. And gave me baby aspirins and they gave you nitroglycerin yeah they gave me nitroglycerin I think three or four times um, so they took me to the hospital they, they drove me over to the hospital and, uh, and I rode with them because I could not drive I could barely walk yeah she was she yeah, she was she was right bad off. She was feeling just as bad as I was, if not worse, mm -hmm. as far as the sick part. But anyway, um, we got to the hospital and the pain had eased off, and I thought, well, maybe it was just a panic attack or something, you know. But I wasn't realizing was that the nitroglycerin that they mm. is that what it is? Yeah, the nitroglycerin that they gave me was was uh helping my heart it was it was you know slowing it back down mm -hmm. and um so we got in there we you know we went straight through the doors and of course this this was what march 14th yes march 14th so y'all know when the covid started it was just you know when they really started getting strict um, uh, where we live in Virginia we it was did. just starting to really hit yeah. here so schools had just closed that Friday for like two weeks yeah <clears throat> and uh, so we got to the hospital and you know they were coming in there in masks and they 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 tested her for the flu and they tested me for the flu well they said i looked really bad that i should be yeah maybe i should be checked so i had to go through the process and be checked so come to find out she had the flu and i was, I was like oh, oh positive for flu yeah. what flu a flu b yeah influenza a yeah um and i was like oh well, cool I, I mean, it's probably what was wrong with me then and then you know they said your test was negative and I was like, well, how's that? Because I've been with her, you know. I mean, don't... we were sharing drinks the yeah. night before. So how yeah. did I have it and he didn't? So yeah. We just knew that's probably what it was. Yeah. So they did, they... they did x-rays. Yeah, they did x-rays. <clears throat> um, they told me that I had double pneumonia. 
um, and they were uh, wanted to test. Um, they told me that they wanted to give me a test. Uh, did they give it to me there? They did not give it to you there. They, they had to, to call the health department and they recommended that you be tested for COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah. So then it was a whole process. Uh, people came in with gowns, masks. Uh, nobody could come back there. They made our uh, daughter and daughter-in-law leave from the waiting room. And they said they had to leave and go to the car. They could not be in the building. And uh, then they had to find somebody who would take me, and they sent me to the hospital that I went to before, which was uh, which was exactly where I wanted to go because it's one of the top one ten. of the top hospitals in the in the nation mm -hmm. for heart. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> so they they took me, and uh, the whole process. <coughs> and I didn't go. Yeah. I, they said I could, but I didn't know if they would let me in the door because I had the flu. So I had to let him go by himself, which was really hard. And I had to come back home and worry. They, the transport um, took me and they had all the masks on and all the you know, the face shields and everything, and I was like a disease by then. So, uh, so transport, um, finally came and got me from the hospital, and, um, I slept most of the way. Um, when I got there, uh, we had to wait. Uh, we waited probably a good 20 minutes because the transport supervisor had to come and meet, I guess, the supervisor of the hospital or something, whatever it was, and their supervisor had to be there. And when they finally brought me in, um, they just rushed me in there like they didn't want anybody to see me or anything like that, you know, like, you know, I was a a disease and I understand and they kept telling me you know it's just a precaution we don't mean to make you feel bad but it, it, it still makes you feel bad I mean why wouldn't it yeah so they get me into this room and one of the transport guys are in there and um, the lady at the hospital I guess I was in the emergency room um, they put me in a room and um, shut the door <laughs> and I could hear him out there talking and stuff um, and he from then on you know I, I seen nothing but masks and stuff and um, I don't know if I was the first one at that hospital to be treated or treated like that uh, but you were probably close yeah and nobody really they just I don't think they really knew what to do mm -hmm. um so i don't i don't fault them it was just you know when you treat it like a a plague <laughs> um and all you're trying to do is fix your heart you know oh we need to back up okay all right um when we were at the first hospital um they were going to send me on i think they would they were going to try to send me maybe to get the test done, maybe. But they were saying that I didn't have a heart attack. Oh, really? Yeah. And then that last, that last blood test that she oh, took. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It can't, the, her, your heart enzymes had elevated. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh. And then they, you know, found the hospital and, and, and made sure that, you know, they would take me. It was all a blur. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. I mean, I, I still stuff I don't remember. But they put me in a room. They put this big machine in there, I guess, to keep the air clean or whatever. And I had to keep a mask on. And she came up the next day and brought me some clothes. <clears throat> Actually, it was 
I believe it was that Thursday. So you had been there like four or five days. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Dang. See, that's how much I remember. Mm -hmm. You had been there four or five days because yeah. I had to wait till I could get myself together and better. Yeah, that's right. You know, I couldn't even take care of anything. I was just done. So mind you, no, well, the hospital gave me socks, but they didn't have underwear, so <laughs> I had to go without underwear. Um, so I laid in that and the food was disgusting. I'm not going to say the hospital, mm -hmm. but um, the food was gross. I was living off of fruit cups. And because I'm diabetic, they wouldn't give me any sweets or anything like that. Because I have heart problems, they wouldn't give me any of the good stuff. Um, and they kept track on my sugar. Like if I said peanut butter and jelly sandwich, they wouldn't give me jelly. Um, just stuff I wasn't used to. So I lived off fruit basically and sugar-free pudding. Um, you started eating turkey sandwiches. Yeah, and turkey sandwiches. <laughs> They got all, all of it got gross, but, <laughs> but anyway, so they finally uh, they finally finally cleared me enough to do the uh, well. They did a catheterization. Yeah, and then that's when they realized they did that the next day. And that's when they realized that you had blockages. Yeah. And that you would need surgery. Yeah. Well, they knew something was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. They knew something had gone wrong. They just didn't know until they'd done their catheterization. And they kept waiting on these tests to come back. For the COVID yeah, test. They, yeah. They kept putting it off. And I think, and I, I don't know, I can't really. Remember, but you went in the hospital on the 14th and you had your surgery on the 23rd yeah but somewhere in there I had the first catheterization you had that like the day after you got there I believe okay either that day or that Monday okay all right so then I was waiting then they were making me wait for mm -hmm. the test uh, and that was back in the beginning when it took forever mm -hmm. there was supposed to be two or three days and it was not two or three days um even the nurses were fussing because it hadn't came back and and I was you know just sitting there with a heart problem <laughs> and in the meantime they had done another test for the flu yeah and it came back positive it came back positive so they said it was very rare to have the flu and COVID at the same time so then they cleared him for surgery yeah and they were waiting on my lungs to kind of clear up they were giving me medicine for my lungs um to clear up the pneumonia um which we had no idea he had yeah. pneumonia the only thing we can think of it came from smoking or he was vaping there yeah. for a while yeah had no idea i mean i knew i was breathing hard like you if you go back on some of the investigation you see i was you know we might have cut most of it out but i think i was breathing hard and didn't even know I was breathing mm -hmm. hard until we looked at the footage but mm -hmm. and well uh, i had been telling you for a yeah. while yeah um so yeah then then so they had set an appointment or not an appointment they had set a a time I was supposed to be that next morning mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so they got me I think now and all this time I had been by myself I had only you know FaceTime or whatever it is I was able to go one time and then after that they closed off visitors mm -hmm. and I couldn't go back yep well, they, I had talked to the doctor and they said that they recommended me not to stay there because, well, not to come in because they were getting more COVID, tones, COVID patients coming in. So they eventually cut off all visitors the day of his surgery. 
in the meantime, they found out, you know, through the catheterization that I needed a, a triple or a quadruple bypass, mm -hmm. um, which means that they take veins that you're not really using, they're not much use, and they took them out of my legs, both my legs. Um, and so they told me that I had to, to do that, which was I was kind of cool with, but nobody, they don't tell you all the stuff that you have to go through. Uh, and being that you're by yourself, you don't really have a family member that can be your advocate to ask questions that maybe they're not thinking about. Yeah. So we And just even if they know. tell me, I... Didn't quite understand yeah. a lot. A, a lot of it I couldn't remember. Um, plus they were giving me pain medicine, so I, that just blurred mm -hmm. everything out even more. Um, but they told me I had to take three showers with their special gel, and they, they gave me six washcloths. Um, so I had to do, you know, certain parts of the body with each washcloth, and he said, you know, one would be then, one would be um, before I went to sleep, and then one would be right before the surgery. All right, so I think, I think I took two of those showers. Um, and then before the third one happened, I, uh, I started getting that feeling back, that that burning feeling and I for sure was thinking that I was having another one right there. Um, this was the night before the surgery? Yeah, the night before the surgery. They had set it up and I knew it was coming. Um, but yeah, and in between one of those showers, I yeah, they they carry you to a, a room and they uh, they pretty much shave your whole body. <laughs> pretty much. Um, so they did that too. And, um, anyway, back to what I was saying. Like, I started having problems and then they started calling doctors and um, you know, nurses flew in there. And the nurses were great. They were always on top of everything. And you know, no matter how scared, you know, they were always like, we got you. We do this every day, we got you. So it was a good thing to know. Um, And uh, so anyway, I had problems and they started giving me the uh, nitro again, the nitroglycerin, mm -hmm. what is it, nitro? Nitroglycerin. Mm -hmm. Nitroglycerin, yeah. Um, they started giving me that again and they, and they called their own call doctor and you know he called back and I was listening and they were like, talking and then she had this funny look on her face and uh when she got off the phone she said it was just an in case thing uh, you know if it got to that point but it wasn't to that point uh, so they wound up doing it got to that point <laughs> And they wound up putting another uh, cath doing another catheterization, um, and stuck a balloon in the in your artery. Yeah, in my artery to to help the heart to relieve some yeah, some, relieve stress some stress. On the heart. And uh, I, I, everything from there was probably a blur to me. I mean, if I went back to the room, I don't know. I think I did. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember him coming to get me. Or, Probably because you were, they put you under and then they came and got you the next morning and put you under again for surgeries. And uh, you know, you, I've been through some surgeries, you know. I've had, you know, gallbladder taken out and, you know, had shoulder surgery and toe surgery. And, uh, so I, you know, I've been under enough to know and it didn't really scare me going under. 
Uh, of course, unless they screwed something up, but from what the doctor was telling me that, you know, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That they do it all the time. They do it so many times a day, mm -hmm. every day. You know. So he gave me a good vibe there. Um, of course, when you go under, you know, they wheel you in there and it's cold, <laughs> very cold. And even though they tell you that even though they even though they tell you that you know you're gonna be fine you know there's always there's always that whatever percentage chance that something could go wrong I mean I've watched enough Grey's Anatomy to know <laughs> <laughs> shit can go wrong um, so then you're kind of fading out you kind of thinking where am I going from here I didn't know if I was coming back and if I was then I had to be in for you know, I wouldn't wasn't prepared for either <laughs> I wasn't prepared to go I'm not prepared to lose you either. So, I did wake up and, uh, and I was happy for that. Um, I woke up in worse pain. I didn't realize there was so much shit in me. I mean, then you had a tube in your throat. Yeah, I had a tube. Still on the ventilator, I guess. Uh, now I was fighting that. I felt like I couldn't breathe. His, uh, they had to deflate his lung, and probably because of. His pneumonia, his lung was having a hard time coming back up. So they had to keep the ventilator in longer <clears throat> to help him breathe. But he woke up on the ventilator. And yeah. Yeah, they. He told, told you what he tell you. And he texted me when he woke up. And I was never so excited to get that text from him that morning. And he told me that he had a tube in his throat and I knew that and I told him I know. Um, so I called the nurse and it was a guy nurse. He was a real, real nice guy. And, and I was talking to him and asking how he was and he said, <laughs> he said, I have never seen someone on the ventilator texting on his phone. But he was worried about me. And he wanted to make sure I knew he was okay. Yeah, so they finally came and ripped that out of my throat, which is a very, very good feeling. To finally have it out. Not taking it out, but... <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I had... I had things, big needles in my neck, and I had... Oh... Three tubes running in me uh, for the, I guess, the blood, a catheter, <laughs> and my shoulder was killing me. And my shoulder and my chest were just, but I don't know if it was the way they had me laying, but. I don't know, it felt like I had, my whole body felt like I had been run over by a truck, but my arm was just, and finally, finally, somebody listened to me and they came in and put pillows under me and stuff and made me comfortable, and, uh, and 
and sorry that's our daughter in the background <laughs> yeah um and then i um not long after that uh they're supposed to get you up the first night and put you in a chair but since i had been under um and i was having a hard time coming off um they just waited till the next day to put me in the chair which was fine with me um so the next day you know they come in and they give you uh, give you all your medicines and, and uh, say it's time to get in the chair and I get in the chair and I'm doing good and all of a sudden alarms go off and uh and, you know, you're just thinking, oh God, now what, you know? It makes you, it makes you realize stuff can still go wrong. And I was in AFib, and so my heart was racing. Uh, and uh, they kept giving me medicine after medicine after medicine, different kinds. And there was a what if you know there was a there was a you could have to go back yeah. you didn't tell me that yeah if it didn't stop you didn't tell me that well thankfully it stopped yeah so it did it did it did on its own which they said was normal it happens to I think he said maybe three out of five or one out of five, something like that. Or every That's pretty common. Did, yeah. You know, and it scared me, but I couldn't feel it. <clears throat> anyway, uh, they finally let me get my, you know, in order to get out of the, um, critical intensive care unit um, you had to be down to a certain amount of air um, I was having a hard time uh, getting to that percentage on my own and uh, finally one of them just said you know because I, I, I kept taking the air thing and it was just I never thought I would hate the smell of oxygen or even know the smell of oxygen but what they I mean, it was just steady going in. Anytime I tried to eat, it was like in the way and blowing down my nose. And so I would take it off and put it up a hill when I had to eat. And, <laughs> and they come in and caught me one day and and uh, I said, oops. And she said, well, you sh sh she said, you want to try the other? I don't know, it was, it was a, a thinner tube. And I was like, yes. And so she tried me on it. She said, we'll try again. If it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't be to seem to be timed, then we'll, uh, then we'll give you, uh, we'll put it back in. That they will put the oxygen back in. But, you know, I exceeded uh, their expectations and I stayed with that. And then it was getting it from you know, being turned up so high, down to turn up to the minimum, so I could get the step down, go to the step down unit, you know, I don't have to stay in bed. Um, so that's that's the route I went, I, you know, I was just pushing, you know, they said you had to walk, you know, with a, uh, with a walker, you know, down the hall and back. And I, Supposedly did really well, and um, they recommended me for to do the step down. In the meantime, all this was uh, that's the ice maker. <laughs> yeah, again. Uh, in the meantime, so when I had the, the other oxygen, you know, the big tubes in there, like I was saying, uh, I couldn't really call her or talk to her or anything because it was just you know one I didn't really feel like talking. And two, every time I opened my mouth, the, like air would come out of my, you know, come out of my nose, and it was all loud and, you know. But, um, 
So I went to the step down. Um, by that time, they were getting some uh, COVID people in there. And the nurse had told me that. Um, in the floor you were on, they were yeah, transferring all the COVID patients to that uh, floor. So they yeah. moved him. So I was like at one end. Actually, when I was in the critical intensive care unit, I, uh, I know there was one in there mm. before I stepped down. And I thought I was doing good by stepping down because... And by the way, uh, if you've ever been in the hospital, you know they don't give you no, uh, no peace. One time I had to sleep was like from 10.30 to like 2 maybe. He had x-rays and he had breathing treatments and he had uh, doctors coming in and he had nurses coming in and giving you medicine and, and waking you up and get, taking your blood pressure and uh, so. Yeah, it's always something. Yeah. So I got to the step down and I just pushed to get out of there, you know. I, I walked and I, we tried one time without the oxygen and uh, they said I was doing good and then um, you know, I was in a lot of pain and stuff. And, uh, they had they had left some wires hanging out of me uh, that was hooked to my heart. It was the pacemaker. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was hooked to the pacemaker, but the wires were, yeah. Mm -hmm. The wires were hooked, mm -hmm. still hooked to my heart. Um, so they had to come and get those out, and, um, um, they finally decided I could leave. Um, so they had to come and pull those out, and, uh, I mean, if I, I could sit here all day and talk about everything that they did, you know, I had three tubes that I had to, you know, withstand and let them pull out. I had a catheter, which is never a good feeling. Um, and then just the, the whole open heart surgery itself and I'm I'm gonna show you as best I can uh, mm -hmm. that's that and and of course I have you know three dots right under it that's mm -hmm. probably gonna be there forever but mm -hmm. um, and that just means you lived and that means I lived and so basically, um, you know, and I've been home and, and I stayed in for what, 15, 16 days. You were there for 16 days. 16 days. Mm -hmm. um, they wouldn't let her come up to get me. They wouldn't even let her <laughs> come up to the, you know, the little curvy things where, you know, they usually wheel you out to. Um, they wouldn't even let her come that she had to park in the parking lot now this one was mm -hmm. a funny story because you know when I was ready to go uh, one of the nurses assistants um, well my nurse was supposed to bring me down and she said I'll be right back I said okay so I thought she was going to get a wheelchair and we were on the full floor well, her assistant came back, a little skinny dude, you know. <laughs> um, he said, uh, uh, are you ready? And I was like, yeah, man, I'm ready. You know, I thought the, the nurse was coming back. And he said, well, let's go. And I just kind of looked at him like, let's go. Well, he must, must have my wheelchair outside the door. Uh, so I go outside the door and there's no wheelchair there. And 
I walk all the way down the hall, and I was like, man, maybe he's going to catch one down here, you know. And I walked past my nurse, and she was like, bye. And, <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell are y'all trying to do to me? Give me another heart attack? And then, you know, we go down to the elevator and go down to the first floor. And I got to walk through the emergency room with all these sick people in there. Come out. Had to walk out to the parking lot. <laughs> Now, mind you, I'm sitting in his truck, looking at another door, thinking that's where he's coming out. And I don't see him walk up to the truck. And somebody all of a sudden starts pulling on the door handle on him, and I didn't know who it was. And I look over and see him standing there. He looked so different. I didn't even recognize him. I lost a lot of weight in there. But I was never so happy to see him. <laughs> Oh. That was a long ride home. Came home. The kids had a little parade in the yard. Signed, and they were excited to see him. And he was just excited to get home and sit in his recliner. Which is where he stayed for a very long time. And now I have, uh, I have issues. Um, not with my heart. I don't would. But I do have issues. I have on one side of my chest it's it's numb because what they do they they cut your chest then they cut it with like these scissor things. So they're cutting your bone open. And then they I mean, you've seen it on TV. I mean, they put these little things in there and it pulls your heart out. I mean, it pulls your chest apart. So they cut the nerves all in my, in my chest. And so the side of my chest I, I can't feel. Might get that back, might not. Uh, and then your legs. Yeah. Then my leg, uh, both my legs, they took... Mm -hmm. um, veins out of and uh, used them for the bypass um, so those were all black and blue purple for a long time now I got like you know a couple of little scars on each leg but um, my left leg is is numb and as of right now if I walk you know I gotta sit down every now and then um, just depends on the days, but um, sometimes I have to like, you know, when I shave and take a shower and all that, uh, my leg will get shaking because it's get it gets weak. Usually about 20 minutes or so, 20, 25 minutes. But it's getting better. So it used to be like maybe five, 10 minutes. Yeah. So you're getting there. And it's mostly from my under my kneecap down. That's where, but you can feel where they ran all up into my thigh and stuff. Um, so that's that's a problem to deal with. But um, so uh, oh, so I get back, and when was it? Uh, you got home on the. 31st mm -hmm. of March 30th 31st I think it was 30th okay so it, it was the first first mm -hmm. so the place that we've been investigating uh, where this all started for us uh, that actually caught on fire um, the day or two days after we came, he came yeah. from the hospital. Um, so, uh, so at the beginning of the saga, it was a fire. Mm -hmm. It was a heart attack. And then it was another fire. So I, 
I debated on whether I wanted to even go back uh, to ghost hunting. Um, but you know what, I ain't, I'm not going to let a, a heart attack slow me down. I mean, it didn't slow me down before. And even though it was open heart surgery, um, I feel better now than I have in a long time. Mm -hmm. And something did touch me while I was asleep. You have footage at of the that. Tavern. And it was a hot hand. On on his back. And it woke me up. And I went in to uh, take pictures of it. Um, kind of iffy on the pictures of whether I could actually see something, but mm -hmm. um, but I know it touched me. It woke me up. It was just like a, I don't know. <laughs> A really hot yes. hand touched his back, and yeah. you can see in our footage the blanket pushed down where it touched his back. So, yeah, look for that. So that's why I was thinking maybe, maybe, you know, something don't like me, something don't want me to do that. But I mean, and I had all the protection I could get. I had rosaries, I had, you know, these beads, I had rings, I had... We were praying. We were praying. Yeah. You know, we had stones, we had, you know, they were in my pocket. <laughs> I had everything I could get and, you know. But we were doing an investigation on Friday the 13th and usually the veil to the spirit world is thinner on the 13th. So, we could have had some things coming in that normally maybe not be there. So, and we're not saying that that caused his heart attack. In the beginning, I think he thought it was. But I don't think it did because I don't think he could have three blockages that quick. So, it was probably just something that would have happened eventually. It just so happened after this investigation. But we're thankful that he got through it and got out of the hospital before all the COVID-19 got really, really bad. Um, so yeah. he was able to get home. We haven't really been anywhere. We went to the doctor. The doctor. Like, what, two weeks ago or something like that? We're okay. very fortunate. Our son works at a grocery store, and he's able to get things for us. And um, our daughter-in-law, she goes to the store and gets things and if there's anything we need. And my sister and her husband have gotten a few things from us, like medications and things and other things that we need. And so we've hunkered down and we've been managing okay. We're going a little stir crazy sometimes, but. But that's the only time I've really been out since I've been home, so. Other than uh, just outside in the yard. Yeah. And, and stuff. Um, so our quarantine story is a little bit different than everybody else's. So it's, yeah. It's very crazy. So it's been very crazy and very chaotic and very um, mind-blowing, the things that we've had to go through these last few months. So. And I want to... I want to thank, you know, everybody for you know um praying for me you know putting it out there and, and sharing it sorry <laughs> putting it out there and for sharing it and um for praying and and you know all this time you know I've I've become real close to a few people, um, and I have uh, some, hopefully, some big investigations coming up um, with some very big people. Amazing people. Yes, that it. You know, they've helped me. They've. <laughs> 
even in the hospital even, even in the hospital they would answer me so uh, so I'm thankful for them and uh, hopefully we we'll be back out there soon uh, in the meantime uh, we got this tavern investigation uh, we got the footage and we're working on that and it'll probably be a two or three part series maybe mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking at least two three yeah so please pay attention you know to, to you know, the upcoming I'm sorry I, I put I think I put on Twitter last week that uh, you know that the video would be coming out and it's taken us a while. It's kind of taken him a while to get his uh, nerve up to do it. Yeah. He wanted to share his story, but he he needed to really be ready to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, so in the meantime, we've, uh, <clears throat> We do have a P.O. box. Um, if anybody's interested in sending cards or anything like that, you know, um, that should be in every de you know description down in every description of every video. Um, uh, we do have merch out now. <laughs> That's down in the uh, in the description. Boo crew shirts. Boo crew. <laughs> Got Paranormal Patrick on the back. Yes. Um, of course, I'm I'm wearing my one of my favorite uh, YouTubers shirts. Mm -hmm. Got TV. <laughs> I want to thank the. I only have 313 subscribers, so I want to thank every one of y'all uh, for being a subscriber uh, on YouTube. Um, and uh, you know, share my videos, tell your friends. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the little bell. Give me a like. Um, check out the merch. I designed the it. Merch. There's, yeah, there's there's three different uh, designs on there. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I don't know what else. <laughs> Stay tuned. We have lots of things coming. Yep. I've got quite a few videos that I haven't edited yet, so they will be going up. Of course, there were some that was in the winter that will look a little strange right now, but at some point I'll get those edited. I've been main caregiver, main person to do everything around the house, so it's, my time has been very limited. I work from home, so I've been working from home and cooking and cleaning and taking care of everybody and making sure we're all sane. I might not be, but. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's been a little crazy. So we're, we're gonna get it up there and we're hopefully gonna start doing some live streams and, and get yeah. on DLive and. Yep. and so, you know, it's uh, Paranormal Patrick. I forgot what the DLive is. I think it's Paranormal it's Patrick. Paranormal Patrick. One, I think. One. Mm -hmm. You'll see me, I got a little hat on and shit. <laughs> I got like 18 followers. So. But we try to hop on there and support our community as much as we can. Yeah. We've got quite a few that we watch on there and interact with. So yep. it's a great place to, to go and hang out. So we're when our son and daughter-in-law should be moving back to their house. It wasn't completely damaged. They were moving back to their house. So. Hopefully within a couple of weeks it'll be finished and they'll feel like it's a whole new house and we'll regain the office back and we're going to set up a new um, streaming room and place that we can start doing that kind of stuff. So yeah. We definitely want, we enjoy doing this and we want to keep doing it. So We've always been drawn to the paranormal. So. And of course if you have any place out there that can get access to um, you know in our area not um, we're willing to travel yeah we're willing to travel and, and uh, 
you know, just leave it in the comments. Um, we we'll appreciate all your comments. Um, because y'all catch a lot that we don't. Yes. And I mean, I listen to the Spirit Box sessions, yeah. like, quite a few times. And I pick up a lot, but y'all still pick up a lot. Yeah. And, uh... Okay. And stay tuned to the tavern. We'll mm -hmm. do that in sections. I don't know if we'll do the lights out challenge first or how we're going to do it. We've still got to figure all that out. We got lots of stuff there. So, so until next time. Bye. See you later, boot crew.